Good morning, East End. My name is Nadine Joyner, and you know what time it is. It's time for church. Call your friends and family and inform them that we are getting ready to have church this morning. We want to see some heart emojis. We want to see some comments, but we want to know that you are participating in worship with us. Thank you for joining us. God bless you, and have a wonderful week. Everybody. Amen. That's actually a command. So praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. 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 Psalms 122 and 1 says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So we got to be glad to come into the house of the Lord. Amen. Father God, we thank you, God, for allowing us to address ourselves here once more time. One God, we ask God that you allow us to. Get into the service, God. Let us, God, show ourselves, God, to be worthy, to be pra to praise you. God, we ask all these blessings through your son, Jesus' name. Amen.
welcome you to our service today. Whether you're online or visiting us here today, just let us know, send us some heart emojis, and let us know whatever we can do to make your worship experience more rewarding. Please let us know. Later in our service, our ministerial staff and our diaconate ministry will extend an offer to become a part of this great church. Again, you are welcome. Amen, amen. amen. Come on, let's do that again. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Hallelujah. That's what we want to do in here today. We want to stand in his presence, that his glory rises in this place. And then we want to sing the songs of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's put your hands together. Yes. Yes. Let the glory of the Lord. together in here on this morning hallelujah. hallelujah it is a joy to be in the presence of the Lord one more time I don't know about you but I got a reason to praise him on this morning because he has been a good God he has been our provider he has been our protector he has been our way maker he has been our bridge over water he has been a seal in the middle of the well hallelujah let's give God some praise in here on this morning Glory to God, glory to God. At this time, we want to ask everybody to stand that's in the sanctuary to join in on the reciting of our vision statement. For those of you who are worshiping with us virtually, you can see it on our monitors. And it reads, our vision is to use innovative tools of evangelism to reach a diverse community, generationally, racially, and culturally, in the East End and Greater Bridgeport vicinity for God, as revealed in Jesus Christ, utilizing biblical teaching, dynamic worship, spiritual gifts, and natural talent development in a judgment-free zone, and to enhance and produce mature saints in the spirit of excellence. You know what time it is. Every Sunday morning here at East End, we declare that the Lord is blessing us, not yesterday, not tomorrow, but he's blessing us right now, amen?
without her. We can't walk without her. We can't talk without her. We can't move without her. We can't do anything without you. Father, there is no other way. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God 60 seconds of praise in the morning. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God 60 seconds of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Come on, ha. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey, yes. No way. There is no way. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but let's declare to the Lord. There is no way I can live without you. There is no way I can live without you. There is no way I can live without you. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, somebody. There is no way. Come on, somebody. There is no way. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Y'all forgive me. Y'all forgive me on this morning. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all excuse me. Hallelujah. Y'all excuse me. But when I think of his goodness, hallelujah, when I think of all the times that he's brought us over, every trial and tribulation, sickness and disease, hallelujah, there is no way that we can live without him. Hallelujah. Yes! Yes! Hey! Woo! Hallelujah! Hey! Come on, put your hands together! Hallelujah! our God. That's why we have the right to praise him because he is our God. Amen. Amen. What a way, what a way to go before the throne of grace. Hallelujah. In this moment of prayer. Hallelujah. Going to God, knowing that there's no way we can live without him. Knowing that he is worthy of our praise. Knowing that we depend, we trust, that we lean. Hallelujah. On the God who's everlasting to everlasting. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
At this time, as we go into prayer, let us remember Scott Monk, and always also let us remember Miss Sister Dolores Marshall in the passing of her son. At this time, Deacon Jeff Robinson is going to come in prayer, and also let us lift up our pastor on this morning. morning church let's have a word of prayer here father god is once again we thank you for bringing us waking us up this morning bringing us to your house of prayer once again you know bestowed in our right mind with all our limbs working father it's a good day to be in the house of the lord as always father we pray now that uh, you bless everyone here and touch everybody you know, we pray for our pastor in his absence wherever he is we just ask that you uh, wrap your hands around him keep him safe Right now, we just ask you, Father, uh, we pray for our sick and shut-in. You know, we just ask you to go by our convalescent homes, hospital, just lay your hands on them, let them know that, you know, that they're not alone, that you're still with them. Right now, we pray for this country, we pray for all our leaders, we pray for our president. You know, we pray that uh, you would make a better way, you know, because right now, we need you, Father, as much as we do. You know, we pray for... Uh, we pray for new beginnings here, you know. We pray for the ones that's here. We pray for the ones that wanted to be here that couldn't be here. And we pray for the ones that are on their way, wherever they are. Father, we just ask you to keep us encamped in your arms. Keep us wrapped up. Keep us, hope, keep us near you so that we will never stray. Father, these blessings and all blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Baptist Church. He is preaching for their church anniversary on this morning, and he says he will see you all on next Sunday. So, are we ready for our announcements? I'm going to ask you all that you would send your attention to our monitors for our morning announcements. Grace and peace. Good morning, Eastern family and friends. I am Reverend Renata Harris, and I'll be bringing you the morning announcements. To start, we would like to wish a very happy birthday to our very own one-of-a-kind usher, Brother Alvin Manuel, on this past Thursday, May the 19th. A very happy birthday to trustee Christina Stujinki as she celebrates this Friday, May 27th. We'd like to wish a very happy 15th birthday to Sister Sanai Richards Rice on this Tuesday, May 24th. And a happy birthday to our masterful minister of music, his fingers inspire a shout, ushers of praise and invoke true worship to our brother, Tommy Powell, we wish you a very happy birthday on this Wednesday, May 25th.
As we start the day, remember every morning, Monday through Friday, from 7 a.m. until 7.15 a.m., you can call into the conference line to share in on the morning prayer and meditation, an inspirational word to start your day. The Let's Keep It Going t-shirts are available on Sundays, and now they are at a discounted price. If you need one, please see Sister Nadine Joyner from Pastoral Care Ministry in the vestibule to get your shirt. Attention all 8th grade, high school, and college graduates. Please contact Sister Gloria Reese or Sister Melody McKenzie from the James Tyler Scholarship Ministry by June 12th with your graduating information in order to receive a scholarship award. You can find their contact information in the newsletter or by calling the church. Also, if anyone has a desire to donate to the James Tyler Scholarship Ministry, it's not too late. We just ask that you label your donation scholarship fund. Attention all men, the new men's Bible study is soon to come as the Christian Education Ministry is close to finalizing the development of this study. We are asking the men who want to be a part of this great study to either sign up in the vestibule or call the church and leave a message so they can make sure enough material is available to everyone for this awesome men's Bible study. The class will be meeting on Wednesdays from 7.10 to 8.10 p.m. via the conference line. More information is soon to come, so please keep a watchful eye out. On behalf of the Wellness Ministry, we would like to thank everyone who came out on yesterday to take part in as well as support the Sisters Walk for Mental Illness and the Power to End Stroke. It was such a great event for even greater cause and we would again like to say thank you for your participation and support on all levels. Here is a save the date. On Saturday, June 11th, the Pastoral Care Ministry will be holding a fish fry and merchandising bazaar right here at East End. If you are a vendor, and are interested in showing and selling your products, please contact Sister Terry Gorm for more information. Everyone, please plan to come out and support some of our great local vendors, as well as enjoy an awesome fish fry. Don't forget, Eastern Baptist Tabernacle services are also broadcasted every Sunday morning from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m you can turn to the public access channel to view the service. It's called An Hour of Hope. In an effort to continue our work ethic model for God, excellent or not at all, we would like to implore everyone who has an announcement or birthday to be shared in our weekly announcements to please submit that information to the church no later than Wednesdays at 12 noon. Your effort and cooperation is indeed greatly appreciated. Thank you. Don't forget, you can follow East End Baptist Tabernacle Facebook page for more information about what's going on during the week. And you can find previous services and content on YouTube. All you have to do is search EEBTC on YouTube to be directed to our channel. Again, I am Reverend Renata Harris. Thank you for your attention and God bless you. Again, we want to thank you all for your attention to our announcements. A few more announcements um, for your hearing. The supper program is closed tomorrow, and it will also be closed on next Monday due to the Memorial Day holidays. And last Sunday, we celebrated mental um, health um, awareness. 
And also this month is Lupus Awareness Month. So May is also Lupus Awareness Month. So after our morning announcements, we would like to show a very short video bringing awareness to a disease that plagues so many but failed to get as much recognition to make everyone aware of the struggle, struggles that people who suffer from lupus must endure. Lupus is hard to describe. How would I describe lupus? Mm. A internal war with your own body. Do you feel like you have been hit by a Mack truck? Lupus feels like someone smacked you in the face. You know, they're like, you don't look like you have lupus. People don't realize that it's painful, um, physically and mentally. Lupus is like the bully at school that you always try to avoid but it always finds you, beats you up, and takes something away. Your friends, your energy, or even your ability to do simple things. It's unpredictable and hard for others to see. It's like waking up every morning to your own personal game of the lupus lottery. You now have chronic pain, extreme fatigue, and kidney failure. It's hard to understand. Lupus is hard to wrap your head around. The simplest way I can describe it is the never-ending flu. Lupus is a chronic autoimmune condition where your immune system starts to attack self. In lupus, that attack can be on any organ system in the body, which makes it difficult to diagnose. It's a chronic disease, there's no cure. It tends to target women between the ages of 15 and 45, and women of color are four times more likely to develop lupus. It's hard to live with. Imagine driving a car, but your taillights are out, your tires are going flat, your parking brake is engaged, you're leaking fuel, but yet you still have to figure out how to merge onto this interstate at a high speed. You have to still do it. That's what living with lupus is like. It's hard to treat. Lupus feels like you are in a boxing match and you are blindfolded with your hands tied behind your back and you're supposed to fight. How can you fight? It's difficult to diagnose because every patient can look a little differently. There is no cure for lupus, but there are medications out there that can help treat the disease. Lupus is hard, but you're not alone. I get answers I need on lupus on lupus.org. 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 This disease that you would never even know it because they function or they struggle to function each and every day. Our normal lives in pain constantly. At this time, it's offering in the sanctuary. And for those of you who are watching virtually, uh, can also participate in this. The scripture says to bring your tithes and offerings to the house of the Lord with a heart of gladness. So this is something that we're supposed to do gladly. Those of you who are, are worshiping with us via YouTube and on Facebook who has been supporting our ministry, we want you to know that you are greatly appreciated and we thank God for you because this ministry could not go on without your support and we continually thank you and we continually are praying for you. There are three ways that you can support this ministry. You can do it by Cash App. That's Cash Tag EEBTC. Again, Cash Tag EEBTC. You can also support the ministry by giving your gifts through Giblify and also the mail, sending your gifts to East End Baptist Tabernacle Church, 548 Central Avenue. Bridgeport, Connecticut, 06607, and we are going to give you a time to do that right now. Amen? Everybody sing How Great. How Great.
preaching time in the sanctuary and we pray that God opens up our hearts to receive the word that he has bringing that he will be bringing forth through us our preacher for this morning is no stranger here at East End she grew up in this church as she has been anointed and appointed and called to the ministry I'd like to present to some introduced to others and minister Benita Whitaker she will be the next voice that you hear. But we declare every Sunday morning that the devil is a liar. That he is a liar. Although he may have his thoughts about what he can do to us and what he wants to stop. But God's word will go on. That we are unstoppable and we have the victory in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together, everybody. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Say it again. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. I would like to acknowledge the diaconate ministry and the trustees on this morning because I take this honor to opportunity as I do not have to be here today. To my father and my stepmother, thank you for coming. My father is my biggest superhero. He's my biggest superhero. And if you have a father and you love him, you understand why. And for this is your season. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for those who are called according to his purpose. And we all need to try to accomplish his task or his assignments. Let us pray. Loving Lord, we are your children and we believe that we are in the right place at the right time. Lord, it is in my deepest desire to live and work to your greater glory and to be a good and faithful witness of your grace and your goodness to all who I come in contact with. I study, so let it be sufficient 
and I prayed, let it manifest in the hearts near and far. Supply me with the wisdom and resources I need to be proactive in carrying out our tasks and be sensitive with mind and spirit. Let your name be honored and glorified. This I ask in Jesus' name, amen. My scripture will be coming from Genesis 12, verses 1 through 3. The Lord has said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people of the earth will be blessed through you. My sermon task on today, amen. That No Way song just got me all emotional. I don't know if y'all seen me in the back of the church. I was just dancing, having a good time. And in this robe, when you're dancing and having a good time, it's a little warm. So just be patient with me on today because God has got the word for the people on today. Everyone has a task. If you know about it or don't know about it, you have a task not only to be specific. What does the word specific mean in the dictionary? It means clearly defined or identified. What does the word task mean? Something hard or unpleasant that has to be done. Let me read that again. Something hard or unpleasant that has to be done. When God gives you an assignment, he gives you an assignment to be completed. And it's uncomfortable uh, and unpleasant sometimes because I know I have had assignments and I have not accomplish them until the full capacity, but it was done in Jesus' name, amen? amen? If God came to you and gave you an assignment today, how would you respond? What would, you, what would your reaction be to his assignment? God is God over his whole world, and it has been his nature all through, down through history to give people god science um, assignments for the express purpose of advancing his work his kingdom, and revealing his divine glory and power. In the Old Testament, God wanted to develop a nation that he would worship him. So God called Abram and gave him a task to leave the family and become that the father of the nation that would follow God. Among his people, Israel, God wanted his people to move out of captivity and journey to the promised land. So God gave Moses that specific task to lead the nation of better than two million people to the promised land. Yes. God desired to save human race by his precious son's redemption. Therefore, he came to a woman named Mary and relayed unto her his God-sized specific task. She was to carry the Christ, the Redeemer, for all the world. Her task was God-sized, namely to carry the birth of Jesus, the Lamb of God, to carry out to relieve the sins of the world. Because of God's love for man, he wanted his good news, the wonderful plan of salvation, to go into all the world, including to the Gentiles, which are us. So God called a man named Paul to carry out the gospel, another specific and awesome task, in order that men and women could be saved, and to have an intimate walk with the living God and be the people that he needs us to be at that time for all eternity. Scripture is clear all throughout the pages of the Holy Scripture. God has come to a man, woman, a people, a church, and relayed his God-sized agenda. Down through the centuries, it has been the still, the nature of God to come to those whom he will relay his task. The reality is a person and even a church can refuse his task or assignment. However, the refusal is not with consequences. In the life of Abram, which is a wonderful demonstration of God relying his specific task to one man he could have gave it to, more people to handle it, more confusion, more stipulations, but he only wanted one man to be the father of all nations. Wow, because he obeyed God. If you are saved by God, God has an assignment for your life. The issue is, do you desire to know it, to do it? and follow what the Father says. Amen. To the Lord's church, God will come to his church and relay a God-sized task or assignment for future blessings of that con congregation. It is determined by their willing and their obedient 
is that one given task. God is all about advancing his world, his kingdom, and his people. It is a major issue in the heart of God that he is the true God, the pure God, the only God that we need to worship and follow. God's assignments come from the heart of God. His assignments has eternal consequences. He has a God agenda. This one assignment was a major consequence to one that only Abraham, but to all that would give birth to all that would come from his being. Had Abraham refused to follow God, we probably would not know much about him. Remember his name, who he was, who he is. For we have gone down in scripture as the man that disobeyed God had walked away from his God-given task. Had Abraham refused to follow him, the blessings would not have came down to his descendants. Had Abraham disobeyed God, there would be no Genesis 12, 3 regarding the blessings of God. Through obedience, through his task, the assignment, and the agenda of God, Abraham heard the Lord God say, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. He was aged 75. 75. My father is now 75, so I know what a task can be at 75. Abram heard the word of God speak to him, and regardless of his age, he followed the assignment of God. Oftentimes, we say something like, this is God gives us the direction. I know what the Lord said, but I just feel like I can't do what he is asking me to do. However, there is truth in that. When God comes to a person, people at church, and gives a task, there is always an external, eternal consequence that we hang in the balance for that eternity to reveal the numbers of people that have been developed and walked in sin and came out of sin to serve a living God. As by a byproduct of Abram's devotion of the, to the agenda of God. Imagine all the lives that have been born to worship the Lord God because Abram left his family to worship the one true God. These assignments often come with limited information. Why did the Lord God not give the Abram the details all at once? After all, God is all powerful and he could do whatever is pleasing to himself. He could tell you everything he wants you to do right up front. Life with no instructions, absolutely no instruction. God was interested in Abram staying close to him and having an intimate relationship. So God gave him a complete road map to the mountain and that was it. He started off, he remained close to God, depending only on God, listening to him, allowing him to keep him on the right path. Limited information is not the sign that God doesn't know what the future holds. Since God is almighty and all-knowing, he knows well what each day holds. Yet when God withholds information from us, it is to call us to stay close to him. God is purpose purposeful. God is the ultimate creative action in our life where we need to stay. God can do all things. He does not need our help. He can do it with us or without us, but it's always consequences. There's one thing that I learned in doing the research for this thing, this thing, for the sermon. <laughs> God help me. I researched and I found out God was a surgeon. In the Bible, it says he was an anesthesiologist because it says, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep in Adam. He slept. He took one of his ribs, closed him up, flesh in his place. He was also a sculptor. God was the first man to form man from the dust of the earth. He formed the animals, different shapes, sizes like us. Small, skinny, fat, tall, short. The Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the nostrils, and the man became a living person. God was also a fashion designer. Before the world knew what clothes were, God had made the first outfit for Adam and Eve. For Adam was the wife, and the Lord made tunics of skin and clothed them. God was a surveyor. God works was a surveyor, and he established that. When you were born, I laid the foundations on the earth. Tell me, 
if you know of such. Who determined its dimensions, how far, how wide it stretched, how long, where the lines start, where the lines end? God was a surveyor. He was also a builder. For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. He was also an architect. There are so many instances of God giving specific instructions about the design and the dimensions of buildings project. He did it when he told about Noah's Ark. He also did it when he told about the tabernacle. In the building of the tabernacle, God gave so much destructions of the interior design, the outer design. He's an interior designer. He's also a writer. Didn't he give the Ten Commandments to Moses? All right. So it says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. He's a meteorologist. Who can understand the spreading of the clouds and the thunder that rolls forth from heaven? See how he spreads the lightning and around us and the lights up of the depth of the sea. But we also know that he's a judge. The Bible has seven references to God as the judge of Israel, the judge of the world. Trademarks of his character are fairness, justice, and righteousness. These remain the hallmarks of the present day judicial system and uh, he's a psychologist, which we need. Do not copy the behavior or custom of this, of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. He's a teacher. I will instruct you and teach you in the way which you should go. I will give you counsel with my eye upon you. He's an advocate for you. He's an advocate for you. Jesus is described as a wonderful counselor. A counselor is one who gives advice and provides counseling to others such as, he says to, in John 14 and 16, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will be a counselor and will never leave us. He's an investor. Before Wall Street, we had I am, I preached that before, bankrolling projects across the world. He had a God who deeply invested in mankind on this earth. To Isaac, he was the God that made him dig flowing wells in the desert. To the Israelites, God provided manna and all the resources required. For the building of the tabernacle, the amazing humbling fact that God also uses us in this way. He allows us to partner with him, blessing us so that we may be blessing to others. My most famous one, and probably yours too, he was a winemaker. He made wine at the wedding. He made wine at the wedding. He was a guide. When you think of a guide, you may be thinking about tour guides to museums, cities, but there's more than this. There are guides for the blind, the infirm, guides for company, organization. The guides is usually explains the ways that are done, the one who shows you around questions, new places, new experiences. And he also is a war strategic. When Moses required him to meet with Pharaoh, God told him what to say. God led him through the negotiations between Israel and Egypt. Furthermore, for the most of the wars and the battles that Israel fought, it was God who provided the strategy, the strategy and the way to win. Today, God provides us in his words the strategies for us to win. Simply listen, study the Bible, follow the instructions, Follow who it affects. Your word affects others through conversations, through meetings. You don't know who you touched. Um, people have came to me and said, my friend here looks just like my ex-mother-in-law. Um, Kim said, I was in the pew, now I'm in the pulpit. So people have ran with that and they put it on t-shirts. But I'm here today to thank a couple of people for their behavior in the Bible. Thank you, Adam and Eve. First two people in the world, and from them comes everyone who has ever lived. Thank you, Noah, for building the ark. You had the most righteous generation. Thank you, Abraham, a man who thought not perfect, but obeyed God's command to leave his homeland and unknown promised land. Thank you, Moses 
as the greatest prophet who ever lived for that for a good reason, God appears to Moses in a burning bush and tells him that he must return to Egypt to deliver the Israelites from slavery. Haven't we been delivered from slavery? Thank you, David, Israel's second and greatest king, defeats a mighty enemy award warrior named Goliath with only a slingshot and a stone. Thank you, Elijah, for being one of the greatest prophets, as well as God's heavyweight champion. Thank you, Isaiah. You are one of the most influential prophets in the Hebrew Bible. Thank you, Mary, for being Jesus' mom. As you might imagine, it's bound to put up you up in a theological limelight, and Mary holds the office of dignity and grace. Thank you, Peter. Jesus affectionately gives his closest friend, Simon, a fisher of men. Peter denies Jesus three times, but he knows he's his closest friend. He says, Peter, you will become the rock who would build my church, giving him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Paul. You stamped out the movement of a message and teachings of the Hebrew Bible, persons most responsible for spreading Christianity throughout the Mediterranean region. Paul spends the rest of his life spreading the good news and about Jesus' life and teaching throughout the Roman world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Messiah that loves the downtrodden, extending kindness to strangers, loving enemies. Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, your grace is sufficient. We call you wonderful counselor, friend, mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace, the lamb of God. I am the bread of life, the life of the world, the way, the truth, the life. He is our rock, the living water, the author of our faith, the anchor of our hope. And he is the only one, our high priest, the almighty God, the cornerstone of who died on the cross for us. I'm so glad that my past cannot predict my present. Like they said, there is no way. I know God loved me because um, I'm from the East End, born and raised, been here at East End since 1966. I've been living on this side of town, and we were our own community. And I know God loves me because living on this side of town, we had Braxton's. We had Tony Fruit Stand. We had Mohegan Market. We hung at the Wagon Wheel, the Marquise, Crescent Club, Tiffany's, the Elks, Small Games. Some of you I've seen before there. Faces, 1127. We went to the studio cinema. Well, 1127, I couldn't go in because my father hung out there, so that was off limits. <laughs> studio cinema, movie theater. We did the Beverly movie theater. Late night at Sub King. We did the Moss Skating Ring. We did Montego Bay. We did Dipper Sip. And my hometown was Side Effect. So all of these things that we have been through in life, God has saved us. God has saved us. And there is no way. There, I tried everything else. I'm telling you, I turned to the right, I turned to the left, and every time it comes up, it still comes back to God. Still comes back to God. And I know there is no way. If you give your all to God, he will make it your business, make it his way to give you the love, that unconditional love, unconditional, I mean, love that you surpass anybody that you can ever know. Because there is no way, and there is no way I can make it without you. And I thank you because you love me regardless of anything that I have done, anything that I have said, any move that I have made, anything that I have done that was not pleasing to God, anything that I have done that God just said, you are my child. No matter what, I love you today. I love you tomorrow. I can predict your future. I can predict your walking. I can predict your talking. Just give it all to God. Because again, there is no way. And I would have changed my sermon title to that, but that was not my task for today. But there definitely, there is no way without God. Amen.
Amen. What a word. What a word. Minister Whitaker talked about the task and the assignment that God has placed over each and every one of our lives. And if we are obedient to the call, to the task, to the assignment, there is a reward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has a reward for us for completing the task and the assignment. Hallelujah. There may be somebody that God is speaking to their heart right now. That you may be out of the ark, out of the safety of the covenant of God. This is your time. As our deacons come forward to extend the invitation to discipleship, we welcome you into this church family. For those of you who are watching on YouTube and on Facebook, if you would like to become part of this ministry, we welcome you and we, God, we bless God for you. All you need to do is put a note into the comments that you would like to become a member of this church family. Someone from our staff will contact you. But if God is speaking to you, we want you, we welcome you to be a part of this church, but there are certainly churches in your hometown. The important thing is, is that you, that you unite yourself with a church and that you surrender your life to God. Benita Whitaker, thank you so much for that word. She taught us today. We had a teaching sermon on today. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we hope that you all have received a reward worshiping with us on today. We thank God for you and we thank God for your presence. We're going to see you here next week. Amen. Same time, same place. Amen. May God be with you. May God bless you. May God shine his light upon you. You are dismissed. Amen. <laughs>